Hello everybody, it's Kathy. And I'm here for a tutorial, the fifth in my series on quick and easy. Um, and this is one that was requested. And I'm, I'm merely going to show you the base, how to put the base of this together. Uh, so let me show you what it is. This is a co concertina style uh, book or journal. It opens up like this. It's double-sided. And what you see is you see the back panels have a quote that's stamped right through the fold line. And then these front pieces have a little window that's been cut out uh, that you can see through to see that quote. So we have that on the front, and then we also have it on the back. Okay, and then I've merely decorated my own with uh, some metal-like embellishments. I have a video on how to make those uh, if you want to check them out. But today what I'm going to show you is merely how to put it together, okay? So let's get started. It has a little uh, ribbon closure. This one I use sari silk on. Okay, so your materials. Materials you're going to need. Let me get this in the right place for you. You're going to need 14 pieces of heavy cardstock, and that cardstock should be plain. Um, mine, I'm using this. It's pretty heavy. And that cardstock, those 14 pieces, should be cut into 3 and 3 eighths by 6 and 3 quarter inches. So that's 14 pieces like this. Then we're going to have two pieces of craft board and they're going to measure three and three eighths square. So three and three eighths by three and three eighths. Those will serve as the cover. Then you're going to need a paper trimmer, scissors, glue, uh, archival ink and stamps. And you'll need stamps with quotes as well as stamps that we will, um, or that you will, stamp on the background. Those are these pieces here, the ones with the windows and such. So you need stamps to decorate those. Then you need some sort of ribbon for closure, and then distress ink if you choose. Okay, so let's get started. I have already cut out my 14 pieces. I uh, got 14 pieces out of, I used eight by 11 inch paper. You get three pieces out of each eight by 11 piece paper. So therefore that meant I needed five, I know I needed, yeah, five, uh, I needed five pieces to get the 13. And then I have two left over. I'm sorry to get the 14, and then I have one left over. So it's actually five pieces of eight and a half by 11 cardstock, and they're cut into three and three eighths by six and three quarter inches, and you can get the 14 out of five pieces of eight and a half by 11. Then I need two pieces of craft board, three and three eighths by three and three eighths, and I'm going to cut them out actually out of this material here. I never let anything go to waste. And I just use my trimmer to cut those out. And we're cutting them out at three and three eighths square. And I always just cut these out with my trimmer. I do one side and it's not ready to be cut. And then I simply turn it over and do it in the exact same place on the other side. And by then, you'll have enough, uh, have cut through enough 
for your pieces. Three and three eighths. And this isn't the best on your blades, so I always keep extra blades handy. I simply like to do this better than using an X-Acto knife. It's just so much easier for me. And I do this for all my journals when I'm making my covers. Okay, so I have two pieces that are three and three eighths square. They're going to serve as the cover. So keep your, um, you can put your trimmer aside for now, but keep it handy because you will need it in a little bit. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take seven of these. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, you do need, need a bone folder. I didn't tell you that. And all I'm doing is folding these in half and putting a nice crisp fold in them. Try to make sure they line up end to end exactly. Not like I did here, no, that was okay. Okay. We'll probably do a couple at a time. Just wanna make sure they're matched up. you do that you're going to open them up flat okay now the next thing you're going to do is take out your stamp and your ink and of course I didn't get mine out so let me get one out And let me just grab a, if I have one here, I don't, I need to grab a stamp with a, um, a quote on it. So let me see. I think I have one. I keep all my stamps here in this folio just so I can see them all at once. Um, so I don't have a whole lot of quote stamps. I'm going to grab this one here. If I can get it, I'm going to grab it. I don't know what it's stuck to. There we go. Okay. I'm going to use that one just to show you an example. Sorry about that. I should have had that out.
And because I'm using this color, um, my ink pad is about dry. You really should have a nice wet ink if you're using kind of craft board color. So what you're going to do is you want to make sure that you're stamping so that the text, the middle of the fold is in the middle of the text, just like that. Okay, so that when it's folded up, it's a folded piece of text. A great thought begins by seeing something differently with the shift of the mind's eye. That's by Albert Einstein. Okay, so I'm only going to show you this one. This is what you would do on all of your pieces, the first seven pieces. So you're going to stamp a um, quote on seven pieces. Now, what would the options be if you don't have a stamp, enough to seven different quotes? Listen, that's up to you. You can use color uh, pictures and glue them on. If you have any clear labels, you could, um, print out some quotes on labels, um, anything like that. You could put anything that you feel is kind of interesting that that window is going to look into. The, this idea was not mine, um, so I adapted it, and of course we all, that's how we show ourselves. We kind of adapt things and change them to who we are. So feel free to do that. All I'm going to tell you is on seven of the solid color sheets that we cut, you want something, some quote, something printed that the fold line goes right in the middle of. Okay? So we'll set those aside as if we'd done the quotes on all of them. And you're going to take your next seven. And the same way, you're going to fold these in half. Nice crisp lines. You can do a couple at a time. Whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six. I only need one more. Seven. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take these and you're going to fold back and line it up with the back fold. And that's what you're going to do with all of them. So that you have something that looks like this. You have two mountains and a valley, okay? I'm sorry, I wasn't checking to see that I was in the frame. I hope I was. There we go. 
and again, two mountains and a valley. Okay. And you're going to do that to all seven. And again, try to line them up as best as you can to the edge of the fold. Well, I hope you all are doing well and are healthy. The tragedy of this pandemic is just sometimes overwhelming. Well, I hope you and your loved ones have stayed well during all of this. I have friends who are nurses and it's just hard. They're true heroes, you know. I think of the grocery store folks the male men, male women, police officers, fire department, hospital workers, everybody, gas station clerks, you know, all those folks, the poor farmers that are growing food and, you know, have no place to sell it. It's just heartbreaking. I'm so grateful for what I have. Okay, so I did this to seven of them. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to cut out a square that's going to measure, let me make sure, written here somewhere two and an eighth inch if you have a punch a square punch that's two and a eight two and an eighth inch square you can use that but because I don't I'm going to make a template that's two and an eighth inch inch square Okay, and this is my template, and I'm gonna grab my scissors. What I'm going to do is, whoops, fold this in half. So just to make sure you got those measurements, this is two and one eighth inch by two and one eighth inch. Okay, then I'm going to take this and this is the template because I don't have a square punch. This is the template I'm going to use to cut out the window in your folded pieces that we just folded. And I'm going to cut it out on the mountain fold, right in the center. And I'm going to line it up as best I can. Um, you might wanna measure it, I'm not going to do that. And all I'm going to do, I wanna make sure there's even distance from the top and the bottom. And on all seven, I'm going to cut out the center so that I'm cutting my window Oop, that didn't go all the way. Okay, so that after you cut it, it's going to look like this. All right, 
I'm gonna set that aside and we're gonna keep cutting. You don't need that centerpiece anymore. And I'm going to try, I'm not gonna cut two at once. I'm not gonna be lazy. Although I always try to find a shortcut, but this time I'm not. Do the best you can if it's not exactly perfect unless you have the type of personality that needs it to be perfect don't worry about it as long as you have a square there that's kind of even you're good to go When I'm cutting my square out, I go over just a little so that I can turn the scissors. And what I mean is when I'm cutting up this way, I overshoot the two and an eighth line by just, oh, probably a, a 32nd of an inch, just so I can get my scissors in there and cut it. Three more to go, and then I'll show you how to put it together. And that won't take long at all. I live down in Miami and um, wow, the weather is so beautiful these last couple of days. It's still warm, but the humidity is way down. So it's gorgeous out. Very lucky. It's funny, I grew up in Florida and, um, you know, as I got to be in my late teens, I just couldn't wait to get out of Florida. It's like, oh, get me out, get me somewhere. The hardest thing about living in Florida is the state is so long. When you live down in Miami, it takes forever to get out if you're driving. So I don't know, maybe that stuck with me. I just always wanted to leave so I left for a good number of years and I kept coming back you know I I would leave I got married and left pretty young and then um, came back about oh my goodness 10 years or so later and uh, then moved back up to New England, which I love, then move back down. I'm like a homing pigeon. So as much as I used to hate Florida when I was younger, I love the diversity that Florida has now. It's a little too crowded, but anyway. Okay, so let's show you what to, what to do now. Now you have seven with little windows in them. And what you do next with this is, again, you take your ink, and this is where you want to put some background 
on your pieces. And for this, you want to use something that you can cover the whole thing with. And I'm going to need some little piece of paper to put underneath it. And ink up your stamp. And I'll tell you, this isn't the best stamp. I, you know, I've never used this yesterday when I was doing my own piece. And I know my stamp pad was running a little dry, but, you know, jeesh. So you take it and you want to make sure you're covering the frames of the window. Okay. And what this is, this is your background. And you also want to put it, you might want to take another one. You want, might want to put strips of paper on this side. In fact, that might be what I'm going to do just as an example. Let me get this out. I love this box. I got one of those, I think I said this in another video, but I got this box like 80% off after Christmas at Joann's. And then I just decorated it and has all my stuff that I have to use on my journals. So it really came in handy. So I'm going to use that. This is just simply a leftover piece of stuff of paper that I made look like um, was this type of paper and I made it look like metal and I love it. I love using it. I just think it adds such a nice touch. So what I'm going to do is I decorated the front with that stamp. But now the, the window card piece has two panels. Let's see if this will fit. No. Darn. I'm going to use it on the other side anyway. Maybe I have another piece. Let's see. All kinds of stuff in here. Only not what I'm looking for, huh? So. I can just use a piece like this. That's fine. It's a different color, but that's okay. I'll cut out the heart part. Use this as a template. Okay, so what you're going to do here on these two side panels, you're simply going to glue, well, you can either stamp these, and let me show you what stamping them would look like. And you could stamp them with a different kind of stamp. So you can stamp them like that, give you some options. Okay. So you can stamp them like this and they look kind of cool like that too. 
And what eventually will happen is these are going to be put on the front of this. So you'll see them and they'll look like that, okay? If you don't want to stamp it, you could collage it there. You could collage around the whole thing. Um, I'm going to glue these pieces on either side. I always use art glitter glue because I like it. Dries quick, Lee. So I think that looks kind of cool as well, is to use these metal pieces, metal-like pieces. And of course, normally I wouldn't put a different color over here, you know, but that's all I have right now. So just to show you and give you some options, um, I'm going to use it. It needs a little trimming. Okay, so that's how it looks with stuff on the edge. So all we're going to do is we're going to um, take these pieces and they're going to be glued onto the other pieces at the flap. What you want to do first, if you choose, is you can distress all the pieces and I would suggest obviously doing that before you put anything together. It's just a lot easier. I don't think that I would, well, let me try it. Okay, I didn't do this one. Okay, so how you're going to do this is you're going to lay four pieces out, this kind, these kind of pieces like this. alongside each other. And then you're going to, I would lay the other three pieces above it. These are going to be for the back. And what you're going to do, you're connecting them. Let me make sure I get this right. Let me look at mine. Make sure. just one second. Okay. What you want to make sure you do after you have all of it stamped is you want to make sure you're pairing up the background, which is this sheet, to the quote that you want it to go with. So we're going to begin by gluing the outside flaps. Let me get these all out of the way. And you wanna make sure you match up these edges here.
Then you're going to have one going the other way. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm simply going to match up these squares on the first four, like this. Matching up the edges. And again, these would all have been decorated. I'm gonna set these aside. Pull these forward. I'm still in the frame. I think I am. Line those up. Okay. So I have these four together. Now we want them facing the other way. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to, let me, we're going to take the one that's going to be facing the back, the ones we haven't glued. We've glued four of them that are facing front, and now we have some that are facing back. So I'm going to move the front ones aside and now we're going to glue the back ones. And we're doing it the exact same way. We have three in the back and four in the front. I think they look so cool. What I did when I made mine, actually, when I did this one, is this is, as I said, this is not my own idea. I found it in a book. Um, I used a technique where you wash the paper in a stain wash. Um, so you crumple up the paper. And so I crumpled it up and then you put it in a, I put it in a walnut uh, stain, one teaspoon of walnut stain with a quarter cup of water. And I soaked the paper for a second, pulled it out of the stain and let it dry and then ironed it. And um, it actually made the paper pretty weak you could probably do it if you had heavier paper, but to me it was a big waste of time. And um, it didn't make much of a difference. It didn't, if I had different paper, it would have given it kind of a wrinkled look as you get when you tea dye something or coffee dye something, but it didn't do anything. The paper I believe wasn't porous enough yet it was porous enough to be weakened. Um, 
by doing that to it. So that's why I'm not showing you to do that. Okay, so we have three in the back that are already decorated. We're gonna pretend, and four in the front. What I'm gonna do is take the back one, and I'm going to glue these together. So I'm going to take the back of the front one to the back of the first one and glue them together. Just like that. Okay. So you're starting to see kind of a diamond shape. Like that. And here you want to make sure you're not going over. See, I went over the fold line a little bit. You want to make sure you're lining it up kind of right before the fold line or the score line or whatever. Let's make sure that's down real well. And this didn't stick at all. Okay, and then we're gonna take the front one and we're gonna do the exact same thing, but we're lining it up right next to our first one. Just like that. So let us Line it up. I'm always looking for kind of different, unique types of journals um, to make or books. I was trying to think of ways to make this into a journal that you um, actually can write in. And I suppose you could put little things to write in. You could create some pockets and such. So there are ways. Okay, and we're going to take a back one now. And we're going to glue the back one. You want to go right to the edge. You notice I'm doing kind of sloppy work and I'm not going right to the edge but you really want to. Kinda is easy to do it when it's standing up vertically. And then we need another one in the front. It looked much more complicated than it is, right? I think it's pretty, not that hard. Of course, I say that now after I've already made it once, but um, when I found this technique, it was tricky at first because there were no visuals. I kind of had to figure it out. Then we need, I have a front one, we need another back one. And of course, when it's decorated, you wanna make sure everything's facing in the right direction, especially the back. You don't want anything upside down. Um, it's easy for us, because we didn't decorate the whole thing. Easy for me. And then our last one in the front. And I see here it needs to be trimmed or this will come back to hurt us at the end. There we go. And we're going to put that right there. So now we have window blank, window blank, window blank, or window background, window background. And it all folds up like this. Oh, 
okay? Next thing you want to do is that chipboard that we cut, that's going to be our cover. And you're just going to glue that. If you're going to put paper on it, a different kind of paper, then you want to wrap it first uh, before you put it on top. I'm not going to do that. You all know how to do that. Um, so we're just going to glue it right on top. Oh, obviously if you're going to use any ribbon to close it, let me get a piece. I should have done this first, but I didn't. I'm gonna glue that first right here. And typically I would iron this out. It depends, sometimes I don't iron it. I kind of like the look of it all straggly. Um, I need more glue on this because I let it dry. And then we put that right over that. That'll give us our closure. And then on the back, same thing. Okay, so the only one we decorated was the first one. And this is what the whole thing, whoops, looks like. I know it doesn't fit in the frame all the way. Let me move this out of the way. But when I see my cover is a little off, I'll have to trim that. But you get the gist? I hope so. And I hope you try it. I think it makes a really cute journal, book slash journal. Uh, fill it with positive things and give it to someone you care about. Here's the one I made. Here's the one we made. And you can simply use it as you would a regular book. You don't have to open it all up all the time. Okie doke. Well, if you have any questions, slip them in the comment box if I can help you if you totally got messed up on the directions. Otherwise, you all have a great day, and thanks for watching. Bye.